So my name is Sebastian Reichel. I'm an embedded Linux engineer at Collabora, which is an open source consultancy. I live in North Germany and I'm an open source contributor, um, starting with uh, being a Debian developer, maintainer of the HSI and power supply subsystem on the kernel, and the co-founder of my local hackerspace. Um, the topic today is the power supply subsystem, um, which is about uh, measuring the capacity of batteries and the state of charging equipment for those batteries. The subsystem also contains um, drivers for board level power off and reset, uh, not to be confused with reset drivers and which are just resetting partial things on your board. Um, but I will skip those today. We will focus on uh, the batteries and the chargers. This subsystem has originally been written by Anton, who maintained it from 2007 to uh, 2014. Um, then he didn't have enough time anymore, so uh, Dimitri took over, but he was missing after one kernel release. And when I tried to submit a new driver, um, there was no maintainer, so I took over maintainership. Um, you may have seen it before. There's um, sysclass power supply on your notebook where you can see the status of your system. This is what is being used to um, see the nice status in the graphical application from GNOME and KDE. Um, it basically exposes a lot of information from the batteries and the chargers so that your system knows when it runs out of juice. Um, like most of the older batteries just give you information about the capacity in percent, which is the file which I cut it here in the last line. Um, more modern systems also give you like the capacity and watts and um, how much power is currently being drawn out of your battery. In addition to this SysFS based um, interface, there's also UDEF to fetch those information. Um, at this point, they are uh, um, pushed. So if there's an update um, and you use UDEF ADM monitor, you will push get push-based information of those properties if it's properly implemented in the driver. This is especially important for things like if you plug in the power supply, the external one, then you want to know this as fast as possible that the system's charging again. Yes, to implement this, um, we have a lot of drivers which are device-specific on embedded devices. On most of your notebooks, there's probably an ACPA-based interface, and all of this is abstracted. There's a single driver. This one is apparently uh, maintained by Raphael and not by me. Right. So one of the uh, limits that we have is that um, each power supply that is exposed on the SysFS stands for one physical device. So if you see two battery devices in SysFS, your notebook should have two batteries. I will come to that later again. And then all values are exposed in a standard matter. They are usually all micro amps, micro voltage, micro watts, and so on. And <coughs> for capacity, there's actually two different styles. They are either exposed in micro watts or in micro ampere. This depends on your hardware. The hardware is based on exposing microamps, then the driver should also do this. Technically, you could like calculate the other value once you have all the information, but we try to only expose what the hardware actually measures. So with that, there's um, two different types for the chargers in addition to the battery, which is mains and USB. Also, there's um, some clouds for um, uh, backup batteries, but there's currently no user and mainland, which is using this kind of class. And additionally, there's all kind of subclasses for the USB, uh, which is being deprecated since two kernel releases. I will come to that later. So before starting writing a driver, let me give a short introduction to smart batteries. Um, like, you probably know what a battery is. You can attach something and get voltage from it. Um, but the batteries in your notebook, they're a bit smarter. You can ask them about how much voltage do you have left. We are some kind of digital interface like I2C or SPI. And 
in Linux, we are mostly interested about this chip that actually measures the data. So this is what we expose as the battery, which is kind of a problem on embedded systems because they are sometimes, it's not a single chip, but multiple chips. So they have to like be exposed as one single chip. And sometimes you have to add more data about the battery, which is not known by the, um, by the fuel gauge. So let's try starting writing a driver. Um, this is a base construct for what a Linux kernel driver looks like. Nothing special so far about the power supply subsystem. If you write this um, and compile it, you have some module, you can load it. It will not yet auto probe, but um, here also it will not do anything, obviously, because the probe function is empty. But it should compile and should work. Um, so next, we will add some um, device tree code. This is usually what is being used nowadays on embedded systems. Um, so once we've added the um, device tree compatible and um, this match so that the uh, kernel knows that this should be used, the driver will be loaded once it finds the uh, vendor or my battery string in your device tree. So let's add this to the device tree. Um, you may have seen my example was using a platform device because m a lot of the power supply drivers are actually multifunction devices. So there's some sub-function in a bigger device. So this is, um, this is below some controller which has a lot of functionality. There's the battery. And once this is being passed by the kernel, the driver will be loaded. At this point, we had an empty probe function, so nothing will happen. So next step is let's add some code to the probe function. Um, the device tree subsystem is not as hard as other subsystems, I think. Uh, most code actually lives in the probe function and one more function. We will come to that in the next slide. So we um, have to load a couple of um, platform-specific things. So let's start with um, allocating some memory to put the information. There's actually um, structure for device specific data, which is just for the driver, and the second one, which um, is for the power supply subsystem itself. So after both have been allocated, we can uh, put in some data into the configuration. Um, there's two interesting things here. First, we um, inform the power supply subsystem that we have this uh, driver specific uh, information that we want to store for later usage. And second, we remember the device tree of node. Um, we will see later why this is required. Once this has been done, the um, later part of the probe function is basically describing what we have. We have a battery. And this is a generic name, which is what is being exposed on the SysFS. So you can give anything, and it should be unique. So if you Assume that the same driver is loaded multiple times. You should make sure that there's some kind of identifier in this uh, string. <coughs> and next, there's the information what properties are actually provided by the battery, which is uh, this um, array of, of functions. And there's a, f um, <coughs> a function which will apparently expose those information. We will see this in one of the next slides. And once all the information has been prepared, um, the device can be registered using power supply register, as seen. And everything else will be done by the kernel uh, infrastructure. So the power supply framework will take care of exposing all those CFFS properties. It will take care of, of preparing the UDIF interface and all of this. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. So as I said, we have to provide information which properties should be exposed. This can usually be seen on the data sheet of your um, battery chip. Um, a common set is like exposing the status on the health. This is exposed by almost every battery and usually you can get at least the voltage. All the other properties depend on the specific type of uh, battery fuel gauge that you actually are using in your system. And yeah, let me get back shortly. So this is what is being exposed. So at this point, the kernel knows what kind of SysFS files should be exported to user space. Once you try to access this, this function will be called, which you registered before. And you will get, again, the, um, the registered um, property. 
So for example, if somebody tries to read the status, then this switch case statement will be accessed and you can code anything into the prop status property. Yes, there's a second, oh no, let me start with the health first. So um, most drivers apparently use sub functions on, at this point, um, but really simple ones may just like access the register using for example regmap or the I2C read or whatever. And then they do some translation. The return value is in, um, in this. It's supposed to getting integers. Um, there's a different kind of output, like some properties um, expose strings, but most of them expect integers nowadays. So as you can see, it might be a bit of complicated for health because you have to translate to the um, properties being used by the kernel. But for other properties, like for example voltage, it may be really simple. Like just get the value from the register and expose it to user space. Um, the only thing that you should make sure is that you're using the, the right um, um, scale because a lot of um, chips expose millivoltage and the kernel interface exposes microvoltage all the time. So if you're using some kind of high level user space interface, it expects to see microvoltage and the scaling will be completely wrong if you expose something else. Right, in addition to the readable properties, there's also some properties that may be written to. So there's a second function available to um, set properties, which basically works exactly the same way as the readable properties. There's um, again, um, some function where you get the property that is being written to and you can implement your code and do something with these values. Um, I didn't provide an example this time, but it's like rec map set or something. And there's a second function which is called uh, property is writable, which will be checked in before to see if your property is actually writable. Otherwise, the framework will take care of, of not forwarding the write call. Oh yeah, I actually provided one example for, for the right one. Well, it's not that hard to think of once you've done the read part. Um, I think about half of the power supply drivers apparently use some kind of writable properties. A lot of drivers don't need this at all. Kind of depends on your hardware. So yes, this is basically a power supply driver. Once you've done this, you're have a working driver and your system knows what the capacity of your system is. Um, but some systems need a bit more details and are more special. Um, so <coughs> like some drivers have properties which cannot be exposed using the generic ones. For those, there's a couple of custom SysFS properties that you can just add to your driver. Historically, most drivers use SysFS create to do this, which is racy, so the UDEV interface won't work for those. Um, there's currently a patch set which fixes this by exposing a new functionality in the framework, uh, which looks like this. Um, you describe your custom attribute. Um, this is the topmost function. It basically describes what should happen when somebody accesses your new property and then it's registered. The important part is down here. This basically tells the framework that your custom attribute should also be exposed. So the nice thing of this is that all the registering and deregistering will be taken care of by the framework. You don't have to worry about this at all. Oh, and obviously it's not racy anymore. So this will most likely arrive in 4.21. I plan to merge this early during the merge window, uh, after the merge window. Right, then another important thing is like, one of the harder things you have is what properties can I actually expose? I think this is one of the hardest things that you actually have in power supply. Writing the code is easy, but figuring out if the register in your data sheet actually exposes the open circuit voltage or the current voltage may be hard. So you should definitely check the uh, power documentation to see what each value means because this is the only hard thing and that should be done right because if it's wrong, it's hard to fix later. It will become user space ABI. 
Okay, so you may remember at the beginning I showed you this um, handling that the framework wants to know your device tree node. The important thing is for this is that you may have some chain, like the charger charges a specific battery, and the battery wants to know that it's charged by this charger because when the charger is plugged, then the battery gets a notification that it's being charged and it can do some things if this happens. There's a generic way to do this in the framework. Um, in device tree, this is described by adding a node to the, um, to the device tree node of the battery that is being supplied by different chargers. So once you've properly registered this in the framework, um, there's an hook which is being called if the external power changed. So in this example, if the battery will get notified if the USB charger or the AC charger changes. And this is being done using this external power change hook. Um, a lot of drivers use this to just like update their values, like seeing, oh, the battery, the charger changed, so the battery values must also have changed. Let's notify user space that it should uh, update its values. And this will only work if you properly provide the device tree node. Otherwise, the uh, framework cannot uh, find the um, node that is being described here. So make sure to properly add this one. Everything else will work automatically. Um, then there's a couple of um, fuel gauges which um, do not know everything about the battery, like it's missing information, how big is the maximum capacity, um, what's the maximum charge current, all kind of information which is static and which describes the actual battery cells. So, um, two or three kernel releases ago, we added um, a new function which just describes the cells, all the static information. Um, it was written by Liam Beck for um, the Texas Instruments driver, if I remember correctly. It's nowadays used by multiple drivers. And it's quite simple to use. There's a structure which has all kind of values and there's a function which will fill in all the information from device tree or ACPI, there's also ACPI support, into this structure and then you can just fetch them. So it's usually currently it's being called during the probe function and it's like copied over to the driver specific information. Um, you're not supposed to use all of the information of this structure but thus the ones that you are needing for your driver. And one of the new things that we are currently adding is um, support for converting the open circuit voltage into capacity. Um, historically, we tried to avoid having this in the kernel because um, it's much easier to do this if you have floating point available. And this is a lot of, it's kind of hard to describe the curves. Um, but there's a lot of users who actually want this in the kernel and it kind of makes sense. So we are currently preparing some codes so that you can describe this nice curves in device tree for different temperatures and then at, when the system sees some voltage it can translate it using some framework functionality into capacity. Not micro ampere like it's shown here but just capacity and percentage. And other than that, I told you in the beginning, there's some new things for USB chargers. Um, historically, if you had like some USB CDP or DCP device, then the type um, property had to change at runtime, which is not the way it should be done. So it has been changed quite some time ago, I think like a year. There's now always, the type is always USB, independently of what your current USB mode is. And um, you have a new USB type where you can see what mode is used at the moment. And also what modes are available. So this, if you cut this device, similar to LED triggers, you see in brackets the mode which is currently selected and all the other modes being available. And just like the other properties, this property can be writable. So you can write DCP into USB type and then the mode is supposed to change from CDP to DCP and the selection will change. 
to do this, there's um, a couple of, of structures in the kernel. Um, first of all, you have to let the framework know what modes are available by your charging driver, um, which is similar to how the other properties are exposed, except that it's not exposing SysFS properties, but just some strings inside of the USB type property. And yeah, then as I said, you, you will obviously want to expose that there's the USB type property, otherwise there won't be any SysFS file. And once you're done with that, there's um, new <coughs> um, structure entries for, uh, where's the USB type, and the number of USB types, which is of the array size. And then you're done, because all the other special handling is done in the um, SysFS handling of prop USB type, which you're supposed to implement in this big switch case statement. All right, so we have a couple of shortcomings still in this subsystem. First of all, if you have a battery which is measured by more than one fuel gauge, there's a problem because basically you would want to write two drivers, which will end up exposing two different um, directory structures in the SysFS tree. So user space will assume that you have two batteries, but it's actually the same one. Um, we currently don't have a solution for this because there's not a lot of devices doing this. At the moment, I only know of the N900. And um, if somebody wants to work on this, it's highly appreciated. The second one is uh, charging. Um, on x86, all the charging is handled by an embedded controller. It takes care of starting the charge process and stopping it automatically without Linux being involved at all. The advantage of that is that it will also work when there's no operating system loaded. But on embedded devices, this is sometimes implemented differently, um, where the kernel or user space is supposed to take care of this. <coughs> Samsung wrote a driver for this. It's called a Charging Manager, um, which can take care of, of all the state machines but it's specific for, for a couple of chips and you have to do a lot of description in device tree to get it running. And it should work automatically, so we, we would want, like to have support in the framework itself so that you just have to describe the charger and the battery and the subsystem will take care of properly charging everything automatically. Unfortunately, this is currently not working and nobody is working on this as far as I know. Right, so that's it. Are there any questions? Doesn't, yeah, come to the mic. Yes. Uh, fuel gauge sounds pretty much like an industrial I.O. type of device. Is there any relation between yes. batteries and I.O.? There is some kind of relation. Um, so the fuel gauge itself, usually it's not in I.O., but um, some of them use I.O. to get the temperature of the battery. Um, in that case, we have some, some links to I.O. I.O. provides an in-kernel API to get data from it. In theory, it would be possible to, to get like all the data from IIO, but I don't think we currently have a driver for that. Are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, how would it be possible to get the battery um, battery left time in seconds in user space? So what is being done is basically that on modern and on, on better fuel gauges you get the um, the remaining capacity in microwatts mm -hmm. or in microampere hours, um, and you also see how much power is being taken out of the battery in microwatt or microampere. Okay. So you can basically divide both numbers and you get the time. It's obviously quite dependent on the system load because if you do more, then more current is drawn and then the time will go down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, 
Okay, it looks like this is all of the questions. So have fun eating lunch. <laughs> <laughs>